So, turn down the lights. Get us going. Before we get to the actual notes, and again, these are going to tie into the lab from yesterday, but before we get into real notes, just want to throw out a couple of questions just to make sure we're all on the same page in terms of this stuff. So, as an object is falling, so for example, when you drop that tennis ball, as it fell, what kind of happens to its speed? Just in a word or two. One would happen to speed. Or if you want to say four words, that's fine too. But no need to write times. So increases, increases over time, increases, increases. All right. Speeds up, speed increases, gets fast. All right, great. So I want to make sure we're all on the same page there. Next one here. As an object falls, does it have a positive or negative velocity? And if you can, can you explain why? If you don't really remember, um, you can, it's perfectly fine to say I'm not sure, but if you have an idea, feel free to say negative or positive and why you think that is. Or if you want to make a guess, that's fine too. We didn't really talk about this too much, but maybe like one of the very first days of notes, I kind of mentioned it a little bit. So I'll highlight a couple of these. Now this person just went through the idea, so negative when going down or south. So it has to do with the direction. So think about negative has to do with going down. Positive has to do with going up. So kind of get that in your head. All right, negative is down, positive and up. And this person said in the negative y direction. So going straight down is considered negative. And that's why I would say, if something is falling, it's going to have a negative velocity. Last little question before we get into tons of new stuff. I don't want to say tons of new stuff. Several different new things. Um, what is an acceleration? So an acceleration is a change in what? If you remember what it's a change in, there's a couple of different ways you can explain it. There's a couple of different words you could say to change in something. But all these are looking good so far. Everyone is typing something, has got something perfect. So, first you put in the units, meters per second per second, so change in velocity. Change in velocity or change in speed works too. Change in speed, change in speed over time. So it is a rate, so you could say velocity over time, change in speed, so how change in how fast it goes. I didn't see someone else put one other thing. And it also could be a change in direction too. So how fast something's going, what direction it's going. Today we're really focused on this idea of how fast is velocity or speed over time. Now, this unit is all about projectiles. 
And a projectile is just an object that's moving through the air. And the only thing that's affecting it is gravity. So once you let it go into the air, the only thing acting on it is gravity. In our next unit, we'll talk about something called friction or air resistance that would affect it. But for now, we are going to ignore that fact and say gravity is the only thing that's working on something in the air. So if you throw something in the air, once it's out of your hand, gravity is the only thing working on it. Let's try to pull it back down to the ground. Now there is some, there's gonna be some calculations and some numbers we're gonna to put to gravity. So we are gonna have quite a bit of mathematics today. Now, gravity again, think about it as a pull downward. And if we're talking about direction, think about this is the negative y direction, since it's downward. And again, y is vertical and negative is down. And it pulls something and it causes it to accelerate. So it causes a change in how fast it's going. And that acceleration is always negative 10 meters per second per second. In reality, it's closer to 9.8, but in this class and even AP physics, we like to round it to negative 10, just to make the math easier. So this negative 10 is called the gravitational constant. So sometimes you may see G in a formula and that just stands for negative 10. And I'll explain kind of what this actually means on the next slide. Like how does this, what, what does negative 10 meters per second per second actually mean? And again, you won't have to memorize that negative 10. It'll always be on the board whenever we need it. But what this actually means is if I was holding this tennis ball just like a bunch of you did yesterday, and you let it go, at the very start, when time was zero, it had a velocity of zero. But every second, Every one second, the velocity changes by negative 10. So after one second, it'd be negative 10 meters per second. So that's kind of like what the speed would be. Then it'd be negative 20. Every second, it goes by 10 or changes by 10. So if you had a speedometer as it fell, it would keep getting faster and faster by 10 meters per second. Now in our next student, we'll, um, there's that myth about the penny drop we watched on Mythbusters and they talked about something called terminal velocity. We'll talk about that in our next unit. So don't worry about that. But the one thing that is different, so this always goes up by the same amount, but how far it goes or the distance something falls is exponential. So it's not just always going 10 meters more every second. And we'll show you a formula to actually calculate that. There are two formulas we're gonna look at today are two we've actually seen before in our last unit. We're just going to use them slightly differently. So all the units are the same. The little symbols are the same too. So the variables, just to kind of remind you what they are, VO is the starting velocity. T is the time. V is the velocity in meters per second at time t. X is the position. And sometimes you may see this delta X. That's displacement, or if you want to think about it, how far something has moved. And again, acceleration is always going to be negative. So this is a reminder what those are. 
We're not going to be used on the next slide. If you have the paper copies, you may see three formulas. We're not going to use all three. Nope. We are just focusing on the top two here. So the first one here is basically saying how fast something is going to be moving after a certain amount of time. The next formula here is talking about how far something moves after a certain amount of time. The last one, don't worry about. But again, these two formulas are the same ones from the last unit that we've already worked with. So what we're going to do is just do two quick problems. And what we're going to do for each one of these, we're going to start by having you choose which formula would work best, and then we'll actually solve it. So this one here says, how many seconds will it take a rock to reach negative 50 meters per second if it is dropped from rest? So the things we know, actually, we want to know how much time it's going to take. We want to figure out how much time it'll take for the object to reach negative 50 meters per second. And it says it's dropped from rest. From rest means the starting velocity is zero. And for all of our problems, acceleration on Earth is negative 10. So looking at the top two formulas, which of those two best matches the variables that we have? I'll put a 30 second timer on here. All right. All right, what are you thinking? So, the one variable that is not here, the difference between these two, this one has, this formula has velocity. This one has how far the displacement. We do not have that or we're not looking for it. So, that top formula is going to be your best choice in terms of which one to use. So the top one here is the good one based on what we have. Now the next slide, I actually want to solve this. So putting up the formula, I put some time on the left. Have you guys tried to work through it? I'll plug in the numbers to kind of get you going. So the end velocity is negative 50. It started at zero because it was just dropped. Acceleration is negative 10. You are looking for time. Everyone's got the perfect answer. So if you keep on going, you'll get something like this. And based on what you guys got, you guys did excellent work. You guys all got five for the time. So if you end up with like negative five for a moment there, again, time won't be negative. It could just be like a decrease with the sign. All right, the other formula that we're going to look at is going to come actually a little bit later. Oh, no, I'm good. We're good. The other quantity or other idea we are looking at, and then we looked at in yesterday's lab, is a vertical projectile. 
So a vertical projectile is something that you essentially launch vertically. So its initial velocity is in the positive y direction. So it goes up and comes back down. Now, every second, the acceleration is still negative 10. So let me give you an example and just show you how velocity would change as it goes through the air. So at the very start here, let's say this one started at 30 meters per second going up. So when time is zero, it's 30. One second later, the velocity would change by negative 10. So if you had 30 and you added negative 10, that means it's going to be 20 meters per second. So it was going upwards. It's still going upwards, but maybe not nearly as fast. The next second, it's going to change by another negative 10. So if you take 20 plus negative 10, you get 10 meters per second. So it's still moving up, but not nearly as fast. The next second, if you had 10 and you did a negative 10 at the very peak, at the very peak of its flight, that's when the velocity equals zero. So whenever the velocity reaches zero, you keep taking away that starting velocity. Every second you lose negative 10, that's when it's at its peak. And it's gonna end up changing directions. Because this whole positive velocity is when it was moving up. When it reaches zero, when it slows down so much it hits zero, that's when it starts falling. So that next second, the velocity, if it was zero here, and I did negative 10, now it's going to be negative 10 meters per second. Another second later, if I take away another 10, it's going to be negative 20. And then the next second, or the last second, the final velocity, it's going to be negative 30. So, when you throw something up, it starts the positive velocity. And when it comes back down to your hand, it's going to have a negative velocity. So if you throw something up at 30 meters per second, when it comes back to your hand, it's just going to be negative 30. So that final and initial velocity are going to be equal. The difference is this is negative and this is positive. So if you throw something up, it's going to come back down to you at the exact same speed. But it's just negative because it's coming down, as opposed to when you threw it, it was positive. So a lot of information on this slide here. And if you can grasp this idea, then you really kind of understand the basic of uh, vertical projectile, all the different things about. The next slide has a lot of a uh, lot more space and stuff, but it's essentially a lot of the same things. I'm just going to add not numbers really, but just a couple of pieces of information. So the idea is here: as time goes on, this thing goes up and comes back down. So the idea is here, this whole time as it's rising, a couple of things are true. It has a positive velocity because it's going up, but it's slowing down. As it's falling, we would say it has a negative velocity but it's getting faster. And that's kind of what we saw when I added those numbers. That's the general trend we see. But one thing that's and actually at the peak here, at the very peak, we said the velocity would be zero. But always during every second of the flight, 
the acceleration is negative 10 meters per second every second because the velocity is changing negative 10 every second. So again, acceleration says how much your velocity is changing, how much your speed is changing. And on Earth, if something's just falling through the air, then it's always negative 10. So I want to do two practice calculations and see how well we can do with these. And then we'll move on to your different practice options. So two more, actually say four slides, two calculations, and then we'll be good. A couple of people have ran, so we're going to get kind of caught up. But again, hopefully um, some of the guided practice will kind of hammer this home. But if you're kind of getting it already, um, that is excellent. But if you're kind of like, what is he talking about? We'll hopefully get there soon. All right. So, like I said, this last formula, we're going to ignore probably until the end of next week. We have some bonus questions on your assessment built in if you want to kind of take that challenge. But you shoot an air upwards. So initial velocity of positive 30 meters per second. So it's going to go up and come back down. So when it comes back down to the ground, we know the final velocity is going to be negative 30. And we're trying to figure out how much time will it take to come back to the ground. Other thing we do know because we are on Earth, the acceleration is always negative 10. So again, not looking at that formula. Both of these formulas have time in it. Which formula do you think is probably the most appropriate based on what we know to try to solve for time? So based on what we know, the numbers we have. Who's the best one to solve for time? All right. Most of you are congregating by the top one, and that is perfect. The reason is if it said something about height or meters. That second one is going to be the good one. But we don't know the height and aren't looking for height. So that top one is going to be our best bet. So let's actually solve this one. So I'll give you guys just a little bit of a head start. We've got a couple of right answers in already. Nice work. A little time to plug in. So remember, the starting velocity was positive 30, the final is negative. You know, a 30 second head start, and then I'll plug in the numbers if you're not 100% sure. Okay, so again, the final is negative 30 when it comes back to the ground. Started at positive. Acceleration on Earth, we're always going to use negative 10. And the time is what we're looking for. Okay. So if you're trying to get time by itself, first step, subtract 30 from each side. You're left with that. A couple of different answers here. Last step is dividing by negative 10. 
And looking over, majority of people ended up here at six. We had a couple people at three. And three is actually something we're going to use in our next problem. But the total time it takes for it to go up and come all the way back down is six seconds. Now, three seconds would be the time it would take to get to zero. <laughs> so in the next problem, we're actually going to use that three seconds. And I'm going to kind of explain why when we get there. So when it reaches its maximum height, when the velocity is zero, that is basically half of the time. So when you solve this and you get a total time, half of the time or the time to get to the peak is just half of that. Because if you wanted to solve it, if it asked you to get the peak height, you would just put zero in there. Because that's going to be the velocity of the peak. And then you get to that. But for this one here, you want to know the total time. So we put in that negative third. Now, I'm going to jump forward to this slide here, just because we actually got a good start on this. So this one wants you to figure out the maximum height that this goes. So you shot it up at 30. And we want to figure out how high. So when we say maximum height, we mean how high it moves. kind of like the displacement. And based on the last problem, we figured out it would take three seconds to get to that peak. Because you figured out the total time is six. Half of that time is the time it takes to get to the tippity top. Now, the formula to figure that out, how far, this is the same one we had last unit. And a lot of you had it on your test or used it on your flip grid assessment. So how high it goes, we do not know. We know the initial velocity is 30. The time we are using to get to the peak is three seconds. And the acceleration is negative 10. So if you were to use six as your time, what you would end up with is a height of zero. So if you actually tried to use six in that formula, you'd end up getting a height of zero because it's back on the ground. Put a little time on the clock. And then in a little bit, I'll plug in some numbers. Kind of help you guys do it. If you're not really sure where to go next. This is the initial velocity was 30. Time to get to the peak was three. Acceleration is negative 10. And this squared part here, you are just squaring the three. And if you want, if you have a scientific calculator and want to plug those all in together, you definitely can. Instead of kind of thinking about putting each one in at a time. You'll get 90 minus 45. 